So you're a musician, you're a singer, you're a songwriter. You're listening to the radio and you're thinking, geez, I wonder how we can get my song on there. Today you have your chance. We're going to be talking to somebody from the radio station. They're going to tell you not only how you can get it on the radio, but how you can get it on TV with a simple email. Mark, welcome to Roy's Studio Adventures. It's good to have you in the studio. Thanks for having me. First question for you is, can you tell us about your journey in the radio industry and how you started? Basically, we're just a grassroots organization. I uh, wanted to give back to the arts and uh, to the Lions, who end up owning the station now. Uh, will end up owning the station now. And uh, that's how it got started. I have no background in the arts or broadcasting. I just chose to do something I always wanted to do, and, and I love doing it. What inspired you to create Northern Tributes Radio? I was a suicidal teen, and, you know, I got helped out uh, by the Lions a little bit and, and on a rough day, you know, and I always swore that uh, I'd give back to the Lions, and a lot of my... Uh, youth was spent with headphones on and I was listening to Rush and Loverboy and and the 80s music that I grew up on, late 70s, 80s music. Uh, and it was a lot of Canadian content. And because I listened to Canadian content and I kind of uh, felt that I owed the arts and I owed the Lions. And now I've kind of created with a lot of community support, uh, not only a radio station, but a Lions club to run it and and now I've kind of given back what I promised and you know so that's why it's Canadian content and and uh, that's why it's the arts for a guy with uh, no background. How do you choose the artists and the music for the radio? The music for the radio is pretty straightforward if you're Canadian content you're on our radio station uh, we don't run by CanCon rules, we run by 100% Canadian. Certain bands, there's Canadian in them. I mean, CSNY has Neil Young in it. So, I mean, we could play other music that still spotlights the talent of Canadians, uh, you know, in the international stage, and that's sort of what we're about. A uh, lot of it's Niagara-based talent. Uh, Niagara-based talent's how the studio and radio get off the ground, and... Now we have an Arts and Entertainment Lions Club run uh, the radio, northerntributesradio.ca. And they now are true can community content and, and true Canadian content. So that's more or less how it's come about. And I get to the privilege of managing the day-to-day. -day. What do you look for in an artist before you air them on this show? Family content. Uh, if it can be played in front of little kids and, and stuff, then it makes the airwaves. We, we're a multi-genre radio station. Uh, we're not specifically classic rock or we're not specifically country. Uh, we play, I think it's eight genres of music. Uh, everything from techno style uh, to hip-hop to, uh, you know, rock and classic rock. So we, we cover others, of course, but that's, you know, what I program today, so... <laughs> you know, I was working at the studio today and that's what I programmed. So that's where we're at. As long as there's not a profanity laden song or the content isn't, uh, you know, sexually oriented and stuff like that. I mean, standard music that's played for CanCon on the radio now is basically what we're going to play. It's just always Canadian content. What was your most memorable moment? I would say the most memorable moment personally was uh, meeting Paul Langlois at a golf course in Niagara Falls and uh, he agreed to come into the, this, or not come into the station, but call into the station. So we had a 45 minute uh, interview with Paul Langlois from the Tragically Hip and, and he's now got the Paul Langlois band. So he was releasing an album and I asked him to come and help us with this up and coming station. So he gave us a 45 minute on air interview and then a 45 zoom, uh, 45 minute zoom interview immediately following. And uh, so we more or less had 90 minutes. We called it uh, Wednesday hip day. And basically we played uh, double shots of the hip and Paul Anglois for like t eight hours and had a 90 minute interview with Paul Anglois. 
So that would be my own personal, like I said, I grew up in the 80s and 90s era and, and the hip came out late 80s for me and uh, for for what I liked and, and I listened to it all the time and they spoke about, you know, Canadian hometowns and stuff and mostly Ontario and it was perfect for me. How does somebody contact and who do they contact to get their music on your station? Well, anything music oriented goes to northerntributesradio.ca at yahoo.com. Uh, anything, I'll just go further with that if you don't mind, uh, anything that is uh, video content goes to NCL communications at gmail.com. Uh, anything video related that we're going to take the audio out of and, and put the audio up or put the video up on our website uh, or anything we do for Biota TV, which is probably your next comment and and uh, you know, but that's that's what we're looking at. What challenges have you faced? Well, I guess the lack of knowledge that you get from being a pro beforehand uh, was my biggest challenge. I, I more or less had to learn uh, Microsoft first, and then I had to learn software for a radio station, software for editing, software, because I never had any background. So I think for me, the, the biggest overcoming obstacle was, was just knowledge. I needed a lot of knowledge. How do you engage with your listeners? I think personally, we do it as a, you know, we're changing it over to the Lions right now. So I think it's just going to be the same as Lions always do. I think it's uh, get out in events and and run events and there's a couple coming up now and and we're going to be volunteering at those events you know uh the radio station members and between 295 studios and biota tv uh the niagara cyber lions can now operate northern tributes radio.ca with uh community content in mind but canadian culture as well so that's where we're doing it what are your thoughts on the future for the radio station? Well, to be honest, the future's up in the air because it's transferred to the Lions. I know what the Lions are intending to do with it, but what happens with the growth of the radio station, I mean, we didn't even expect to have any TV connections. So uh, in three years now, we developed it from a little computer in a corner uh, to having a full radio board uh, right out of 91.7. Uh, local terrestrial radio, uh, ours being online. So, I mean, it's very, you know, it's it's ever-changing, but I believe the Lions just want to promote non-profits of all stripes uh, that work with children, and, and uh, we want to be able to promote all the Lions' causes that uh, we help service. How do you balance your personal life with the radio life? Hmm. When I get that figured out, I'll be sure to tell you. <laughs> I, I really haven't found a balance yet. Uh, it's been a, a busy three years uh, starting the studio, opening the radio and creating Alliance <laughs> Club. And having the three of them work together in unison uh, basically gives us companies, nonprofits and community volunteers working in one direction for the arts and entertainment, as well as the Lions community causes. So I, I don't know that there's ever been a proper balance, but if I was ever going to have a, a wife that understands, I've got one. Uh, she is also a lion, so she gets community service already, and she understands that my commitment that I made years ago to, to go through with uh, needed to be done. And now we're just about there. Uh, by July 1st, my commitments with the uh, Lions side of the radio stuff uh, will be over. Uh, my commitment as a two-year president of the club will be over. Uh, so I will be a studio rat that uh, kind of works on the, the Lions radio as well as do our recording and podcasting studio. What's your favorite interview ever? Got to be Paul Langlois again. And Mark, I have another question. How do you handle negative feedback or criticism? I think, like a lot of people, I can handle the criticism or feedback that's negative uh, and try to learn from it or try to adjust if, if the internal group thinks it's, it's 
something we're lacking or somebody makes a good point. Mark, can you tell us more about Biota and how it works with the station and how their channel is set? Basically, Biota TV is a local uh, TV company out of Welland. And they now have an app on Roku and Fire Stick and Android TV, Samsung TV. Uh, so they have their app out there. And in a deal with 295 Studios and the Niagara Cyber Lions and Biota TV, we now have two categories or channels, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a standard app and you go through all the categories and you pick the category you want. But basically you would go on and just go to the search and put 295 in or Niagara Cyber Lions or something similar and all of our product will pop to the top and you'll be able to watch the stuff. So they're now... Uh, of course, that's where Roy's Studio Adventures will be seen. Uh, they would just go into the search bar on Biota TV, which stands for Be Your Own Travel Agent. That's how they started, so that's how you'll remember them. Uh, they started out just doing destination shots and people sending in, uh, you know, clips of their vacations and all that stuff because they were a vacation company. They'll be able to get uh, you on the TV as well as there and, on, of course, on YouTube where your channel is. So. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you'd like to send your music or your videos to Northern Tributes Radio, I will leave all the links in the description below. Mm -hmm.